ever wish you could just hit pause on those like uh racing thoughts you know the ones that kind of steal your focus and like sometimes even mess with your mood mm. today we're diving into a fascinating technique that just might help you do that okay and get this it actually uses thinking as a tool for mindfulness interesting it sounds counterintuitive right yeah so it's about like yeah. recognizing those thoughts that pop up without getting like swept away by them exactly and we're exploring the work of christopher mccore okay He's a meditation practitioner from Wholeness Geeks who has experience with various practices. And he says this technique can be used both on and off the meditation cushion. Interesting. Which I find super intriguing. Yeah. Could you break it down for us a little bit? Absolutely. So McCor's technique is surprisingly simple. It's all about labeling distracting thoughts as simply thinking and then gently redirecting your focus back to your point of concentration. Okay. Whether that's your breath, a work task, or anything really. So let's say I'm trying to meditate. I'm focusing on my breath. Right. And suddenly I remember that awkward encounter I had at the grocery store yesterday. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting annoyed with myself for getting distracted, I just label it thinking and go back to my breath. Precisely. You're not suppressing the thought. You're simply acknowledging it and choosing to place your attention elsewhere. Okay. McCor even talks about how he used this technique to deal with feelings of being unappreciated. Interesting. Instead of dwelling on those negative thoughts, he would label them thinking and shift his focus. Interesting. So he's not trying to force those thoughts out of his mind completely. He's just choosing not to give them power over his mood. Right. I can see how that could be really useful, especially in those moments when negative thoughts threaten to spiral. Yeah. Did he notice any specific benefits from practicing this? Yeah, he claims it gave him a greater sense of control over his thoughts and moods. Like he could choose what to focus on instead of being at the mercy of whatever popped into his head. Exactly. He describes it as like uh, controlling the weather in your own mind instead of just enduing it. Now, that's a powerful image. Right. It really highlights how this seemingly simple technique could lead to a profound shift in how we experience our inner world. Absolutely. And it ties back to the principles of mindfulness and metacognition. Okay, could you elaborate on that for our listener? What exactly do those terms mean and how do they connect to this technique? Of course. So mindfulness is about paying attention to the present moment without judgment. Mm -hmm. And metacognition is essentially thinking about your own thinking. Okay. When you use the thinking technique, you're practicing both. Okay. You're becoming aware of your thoughts as they arise, but instead of getting caught up in them, you're simply observing them and choosing how to respond. So you're not trying to stop thoughts from happening altogether. You're changing your relationship to them. Precisely. You're creating a space between you and the thought, which allows you to choose whether to engage with it or let it pass. Okay. Now, while this all sounds pretty great, and it can be, McCord did encounter a potential pitfall during his exploration of this technique that he thinks is important to be aware of. Oh, this is where it gets really interesting. Yeah. What did he find? Well, he noticed something he describes as a sort of vacuum effect. Okay. As he became more adept at clearing out his own negativity using this technique, he felt like he became more sensitive to negativity from external sources. So by minimizing his own negativity, he might have inadvertently created more space for negativity from others to seep in. That's a fascinating observation. It makes you wonder about things like collective consciousness or emotional contagion and how our energy might influence those around us. Exactly. Now, it's important to note that McCor presents this as an observation, not necessarily a universal truth. Okay. He even consulted the I Ching, an ancient Chinese divination text, for guidance on how to interpret this experience. I love that he brought in the I Ching. It speaks to his willingness to explore different avenues of understanding and to trust his intuition. But ultimately, did he find this potential pitfall to be a deal breaker? Right. Did it deter him from continuing the practice? So after consulting the I Ching, how did McCor feel about this potential pitfall? Yeah, so overall, he still found the technique to be highly beneficial. Okay. He emphasizes that it's not about becoming completely immune to negativity. Right. But rather about developing a greater sense of agency in how you respond to it. Okay. Whether it arises internally or externally. So it's like he's saying, yes, this practice might make you more aware of the negativity around you. Right. But it also gives you the tools to choose how you interact with it. Exactly. It's not about ignoring the bad stuff. Yeah. 
It's about not letting it automatically drag you down. Exactly. And remember, this technique isn't just about meditation. Right. McCord talks about how it can be applied in everyday life, too. Okay. Imagine you're feeling stressed at work, deadlines looming. You can use this technique to acknowledge those stressful thoughts, label them thinking, and then redirect your focus back to the task at hand. Like hitting the reset button on your mind. Yeah. Instead of getting lost in a spiral of anxiety, you can create some distance between you and those thoughts. Right. Allowing you to approach the situation with a clearer mind. Precisely. And what's fascinating is that McCor sees this technique as a stepping stone to even deeper levels of awareness. Okay. He talks about vipassana, which is often translated as insight. I've heard of vipassana. It's about developing a really sharp focus that allows you to see the true nature of reality. Exactly. And McCors believes that by practicing the thinking technique, okay. you're essentially clearing away the mental clutter that can prevent those deeper insights from emerging. Yeah. You're training your mind to become a clearer, more receptive vessel for wisdom and understanding. So for our listener who might be hearing all this for the first time, what's the key takeaway from our deep dive into Christopher McCors' technique? I think the most important thing to remember is that you have more control over your inner world than you might realize. Mm -hmm. This technique, simple as it seems, yeah. gives you a tool to work with your thoughts and emotions okay. to become more aware of them without being ruled by them. It's empowering to think that something as simple as mentally labeling distractions as thinking mm -hmm. could have such a profound impact on our focus, our mood, and even our capacity for deeper self-awareness. Absolutely. And the best way to find out is to try it for yourself. Right. Pay attention to what happens when you start to consciously label those distracting thoughts. Okay. Do you notice a shift in your focus, in your mood, in your ability to navigate challenging situations? That's the beauty of these deep dives, isn't mm -hmm. it? We're not just presenting information. We're inviting you, the listener, to become an explorer of your own inner world. Mm -hmm. We're giving you a map and a compass and encouraging you to embark on your own journey of discovery. Exactly. Who knows what insights and transformations await you?